On the rare occasion that we boondock, we woke up and we had a low voltage battery. Alarm. It kind of got us thinking. Hey guys, Izzy and MJ from Endless RV. So we recently did a pretty major upgrade to Nelly. In this video, we are gonna talk about what we did, what we didn't do, and why. But before we do that, this video is sponsored by Liquid Spring. If you're looking for the very best suspension upgrade for your Class A, C, Super C, or B, Liquid Spring is the way to go. We have test driven two motorhomes with Liquid Spring suspension upgrades, and they're amazing. They're unbelievable. For our viewers and subscribers, use the code RIDE ENDLESSLY and you can save up to $750 off a new Liquid Spring system. Now, if you want to get Liquid Spring installed from the factory, you can do so if you buy a Tiffin or a Fleetwood, or a Holiday Rambler. Or you could just get it done aftermarket and save money with our discount code. So if you want the very best suspension upgrade for your motorhome, look no further than Liquid Spring. So on the rare occasion that we boondock, uh, we do love it. We did one last year, we were away, and we woke up and we had a low voltage. Alarm. Better. Yeah, yeah. Like alarm warning. went off. Yeah, so it kind of got us thinking. So basically what we do is that we run the generator maybe to like 10 o'clock and then we cut it off, right? So we don't want right. to be those rude people. But like MJ said, we had the, the low voltage warning that went up. So what that meant to me was that our batteries are just not cutting it. Now, stock from the factory, the base star, it may have changed now, but in 2019, it came, it comes with the, or came with the interstate, the SR 24s. They're, Group 24 lead acid batteries, they're pretty cheap. They're kind of mm -hmm. like the cheapest you could put in there. Yeah. They're about 120 bucks out of the factory. Like you can buy them at a store for 120 bucks. And served, I mean, they're basic, you know. They're basic. If you're plugged in all the time, it doesn't really matter. For the most part, we are plugged in, mm -hmm. but it's we're hitting like almost that three year mark. I don't think these batteries, I think these batteries are laying around for a little bit before they actually <laughs> went in, just because the voltage would drop so quickly once we would uh, unplug. So we decided we needed to upgrade our electrical system as far as the batteries. Now there's many different options out there. And we actually did a video talking about, you know, why solar is a waste of money. We'll link that above. But in that video, we talked about different battery options and we talked about how we really would want to get lithium. We one, were really serious about that at one point. Correct. Until we started analyzing a couple of things. One, how often are we not plugged in? And that's mm -hmm. not very often. It's, it's probably 2% of the mm -hmm. time we travel. Mm -hmm. The second thing, we had to balance that with cost. So very much like we talked about in the solar video, for us, again, for us, the cost of lithium didn't make sense mm -hmm. because the cheapest lithium battery we can get, kind of a no-name, you know, Chinese brand, even though most of them are from China, uh, $508 a battery. Right. We're gonna go with the Battleborn, you're talking $800 cheap, about $899 a battery. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. We have four batteries, you do the math. So we're gonna talk about in this video exactly what our new setup is, why we went about doing it, and you know, what are the results? What are we getting out of it? All right, so like I said, we were equipped with Interstate, the uh, SR24 Group 24 batteries. So I'm just gonna read some of the specs on them. Length is 11 inches, width six inches, 6.78 inches. Height, uh, nine and a half inches. The weight was 46.3 pounds each, 12 volts, 81 amp hours for each battery, and they're about $120 a battery, okay? If we would have went with lithium, significantly more. So anything with the lead acid batteries, just a, a quick disclaimer, you can only run them to about half of their capacity. Lithium batteries, you can run pretty much to zero. That's a huge advantage, right? So if you have a 100 amp hour lithium battery, you get 100 amp hours usable. If you have a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, you only get about 50 amps usable. So that's a big difference. However, in our mind, it wasn't that much of a difference for the huge cost. Now I know per amp hour, lithium is the cheapest, but you gotta remember if you don't use it, it doesn't matter. So that's why we're gonna talk about what exactly what what we put in. So we went from a 12 volt uh, system over to a six volt. Well, 12 volt batteries to six volt batteries, still have a 12 volt system. The battery we chose was the DECA GC15. Okay, now these are industrial grade batteries made in the United States. A far better battery than what was in the interstate. The interstate comes with a deep cell battery. It's okay, it's not that great. The DECA battery that we're talking about, they're using golf carts, they're using forklifts. They are designed to constantly be charged and discharged. They're much heavier duty industrial grade. So 
the big thing that you have to take in consideration is the battery going to fit. So now we have a battery tray in our motorhome. I did have to take some measurements out. And here are the measurements of the DECA GC15. The length is 10.24 inches. The width is 7.13 inches. The height is 10.87 inches. So what you will find two major differences between the 6 volts and the 12 volt. One, the 6 volt is going to be heavier. Two, the 6 volt is usually going to be much taller and three the 6 volt is going to pack more amp hours per punch okay so the weight on these 64 pounds so it's about 17 pounds more per battery but the amp hours are 230 amp hours per battery now the cost of these batteries are 142 dollars a battery that's what i paid for them so you're talking about 22 dollars more a battery but you're getting significantly more amp hours now six volt batteries on a 12 volt system how do you do that so what we had to do was you buy four six volt batteries and then you're going to run them what's called series parallel essentially what you're doing is you're taking two of the six volt batteries connecting them together to make one 12 volt the way we have it set up we have two inverters so one set one set of two six volts is running off to each inverter. So when you calculate the total amp hours, so for the interstate that we had, this is just a guesstimate. So the total amp hours is 324 total amp hours. Now, when you go to the DECAs that we currently have, the total amp hours are 460 amp hours. Now, you might say that the math doesn't add up because it's 230 amp hours per battery, but that's at six volts. So when you join them together at 12 volt, they gets cut in half. So 460 amp hours total. Now, usable, remember I said 50% on the uh, the lead acids, the DECAs are lead acid also. So on the uh, interstate, you have approximately 162 usable amps 50 percent on the deck as we have 230 usable amps so as you can see we gained amp hours now why didn't we go with lithium again price was big another thing was we don't get plugged in it's most most of the time we're plugged in so that's not really a big issue what mj talked about when we're at a boondocking location what we plan on doing now and and this kind of was one of the reasons why we went with this setup. We also got an auto gen start. Now we've been wanting to get an auto gen start for a long time because of the dogs, right? So anybody doesn't know what an auto gen start is. It's essentially a unit. It comes in a lot of diesel pushers standard and in some gasters, it didn't come standard with this. What an auto gen start does, it's a, a module that hooks up to your generator and what it, you can set it certain parameters. So for example, you can set it at a temperature parameter. So the way we have our set right now, if we are plugged in at a facility at a place and it's hot out, we have it set at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So we know we have our air conditioner on. Unless the air conditioner completely fails, which the likelihood of two air conditioners failing is not very likely. If we lose power at a campground and the temperature starts going up inside the motorhome, once that module, that auto gen start, senses it's 78 degrees, it will automatically turn on the generator and in theory, the air conditioner should start kicking back on. Now, the second parameter is voltage. So we have our auto gen start set, I believe, at 11.8 volts. If the voltage drops in our system, the batteries down to 11.8 volts, what it'll do is it will turn the generator on and it will start charging up the batteries. So that kind of covers the reason why our batteries went dead when we were boondocking. We had no auto gen start. The final part of our setup is actually some rotary cutoff switches. Now they're not in, they're not installed yet. We have them on order, but essentially what that will do is we're able to cut the power off completely from the batteries to the coach. The way it's set up now, there is a battery cutoff switch inside the coach, but it doesn't cut completely cut everything off. There's always a parasitic drain. I don't know why Newmark did it that way, but that's how they did it. So when we add that on, we'll turn that dial it will kill everything to the coach, which is perfect if you're in storage and you're not plugged in, you can cut all the power off to your coach. If you're getting repaired too. If, yeah, if yeah. you're getting repaired and it's sitting out there, you know it's gonna be sitting out there and it's not plugged in, you don't wanna drain out your batteries because it's uh, it will shorten their life. So what was the cost of the Auto Gen Start? Auto Gen Start is $179. Let's go inside. I'm gonna show you how the Auto Gen Start works. Very simple and actually pretty cool. All right, so the Auto Gen Start we got was the uh, Magnum Auto Gen Start. It is the Magnum Energy Auto Gen Start standalone model. We have an Onan 5500, and that was the appropriate one for us. Did I say what the cost was? I did, $179. So where it is installed, uh, here's the unit itself. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. 
And then there's a control module right over here. So basically how it works, there is an off switch, an enable switch, and then a test switch, right? Well, it's one switch, but it has three different uh, positions. Say we are plugged in somewhere or we're somewhere where we don't want this generator to go on if the temperature goes up in the motorhome, right? There's times that we don't want that. Like if we're plugged in, we don't need it to be cool in here. Or if we're in storage, we don't need it to be cool. But say we are at a campground and we want that feature. What we do is we hit the enable button up and now it's gonna sense those two parameters. Again, low voltage, high temperature. How do we know this is working? If you flip down, there is a test. So I'm gonna flip down. And this is gonna take a couple seconds. You're gonna see a green switch blinking. It's going through its testing and it takes about 30 seconds or so. Yeah. All right, you just hear it clicking there and there's the generator. Now it will run through its test. Uh, we kinda, you don't wanna turn off the generator. It's gonna run through its test for whatever, a minute or so. Once it understands that it's working, whatever it's doing, it will cut the generator off. So let's add up the total, right? It's four batteries at $142 each plus tax. The Auto Gen Start $179 plus tax. And then the labor is up to you, whether you want to install it yourself or you want to have somebody install it. That is all dependent on where you're at. If you're up in New Jersey, it's far more expensive than if you're down south. So, and if you're handy, it doesn't cost you anything. So for us, it made sense. Cause again, the batteries we were looking at were minimum gonna be probably about 1800 bucks around there mm -hmm. minimum. And that's without the Autogen start. So we kind of got the setup we wanted. We got really good batteries. These should last us five years, six years, probably long after Nelly is uh, not with us anymore. So I was just gonna say, so if you're the type, it really depends I think on what type of camper you are, what type of, you know, if you're a full-timer mm -hmm. that boondocks a lot, the, the lithium will probably be way more beneficial to you. Yeah, if you but, don't have a generator on board, I mean, lithium kind of makes sense, mm -hmm. at least for mm -hmm. us it would. We have a generator, we, we just don't need it. We don't need that cost. And that's right, not right. smashing lithium, no. it's really not. Lithium's great. If somebody gave us lithium, we would take it, <laughs> certainly. But we just didn't want to put out that kind of cash for something that realistically, we, really we would, it's, it. it's to me, it's like having the car that does 220 miles an hour, Mm -hmm. but you can only travel 65 miles an hour on the roadway right, right? it's like right. having a whole lot of nothing yeah <laughs> so in the comments below uh, let us know what you think about our setup did we inspire you to do something else or do you think this is you know we're dumb and we should have just a lithium <laughs> put it in the comments below i'm sure everybody will be willing to do so and for myself and mj we thank you guys for watching and we'll see, see you on, on the road, road.